Welcome to the RNL Revolution Nothing Less show. This is our 110th episode on July 14th, 2022. My name is Andy Z. I'm the host of the show, and I am back in Los Angeles, California. This past Tuesday, the congressional hearings on the January 6th attempted coup by Trump presented its sixth of seven charges against what happened on that day. There was telling and compelling documentation of the planning and coordination of the assault on the Capitol. There was evidence of how there are forces that are preparing and salivating for a new civil war to establish a white supremacist theocratic form of rule. The committee members framed their presentation of this evidence as a defense of American democracy, the grand experiment of rule by the people and the rule of law. Remember the men and women who have fought and died so that we can live under the rule of law, not the rule of men. What makes America great? Devotion to the Constitution, allegiance to the rule of law, a shared journey to build a more perfect union. We will begin today's RNL show with a reading of the July 8th article on our website, Revcom.us, by Bob Avakian, titled January 6 Hearings and the Violence of This System. And this article by Bob Avakian grounds our show today, grounds today's RNL show in the true nature of the system that we live under and its form of rule and the rare time we are living in, where there is not and there cannot be any bridging of the divide in America from top to bottom, from the highest reaches of the government down to the most intimate ways people live as has been grievously illustrated by the stripping away of abortion rights by a theocratic, fascist-dominated Supreme Court. The most important thing to understand and to act on in this unique situation that we are living in is that the very extremeness of the divide in society and the fact that it cannot be resolved through the normal way this system has been ruled presents the possibility for an actual revolution. Bob Avakian, in his seminal work for this time, Something Terrible or Something Truly Emancipating, puts forward the foundational understanding of why this is so and provides a deep strategic roadmap for how we can go to work to bring about a future that would be truly emancipating through an actual revolution. On our website, revcom.us, there is a concentration of this roadmap in a piece that it's titled Organizing for an Actual Revolution, seven key points, where it describes the moment this way, quote, This rare situation with the deepening and sharpening conflicts among the ruling powers and in society overall provides a stronger basis and greater openings to break the hold of this system over masses of people. In a situation like this, things that have basically remained the same for decades can radically change in a very short period of time. This rare time must not be wasted. It must be seized on to have a real fighting chance to bring about a truly emancipating revolutionary resolution and not be subjected to a terrible, reactionary, murderously oppressive and destructive resolution." End quote. How do we do this? In something terrible or something truly emancipating, Bob Avakian writes, quote, in order to win masses of people to revolution, there is a tremendous amount of struggle that needs to go on, not just against the system that is a source of the horrors that people are continually subjected to, but also against ways of thinking and acting among the people that actually internalize and serve to perpetuate this system and the ways of thinking it promotes with its monstrously oppressive relations and putrid values, ways of thinking and acting that work against the repolarization that is urgently needed to have a real chance at seizing on this rare opportunity to make revolution, end quote. And today's program will be doing just that. In fact, our main commentary for today's show will be from my co-host and Sarah Taylor responding to a vicious hit job article that targets Bob Avakian and the movement he leads from the website The Daily Beast that repeats and takes off from the attack of some so-called leftist pro-choice organizations that I rebutted on last week's Revolution Nothing Less show. 
In Sansara's reply, there are important questions of truth and lies, of morality, of integrity, of the situation humanity faces, and what is to be done to free all of humanity. These bullshit attacks on Baba Vakin and the Revcoms have gained some traction because of how saturated the social movements in this country are with woke identity politics. I want to take a few minutes here to play a very short excerpt from a talk Baba Vakin gave in 2014 at Riverside Church in New York City before 1,900 people in a dialogue he had with Cornell West on revolution and religion. What you're going to hear is but a small section of Bob Avakian's talk where he speaks to the question of can we be good without God, in which he gives an example from a conversation the Revcoms had with someone in Chicago. In this excerpt, Bob Avakian cuts to the nub of where identity politics leads and what our goal can and must be instead. But to get into this more deeply, Let's turn first to some questions that weigh on many people. If our morality does not have an absolute authority, such as a God as its anchor, then how can it hold firm in a world of so much conflict and upheaval? And up against such powerful forces of oppression or evil, how can we hope to prevail if we do not have the backing of an even more powerful and righteous God. Or to put it in basic terms, can we do without and can we be good without God? And if there is no God, then what should be our guide in living our lives and striving for a more just world? Now many people, I've had many conversations with people where they say, I need religion just to keep from going off. And I was thinking of a discussion that was held recently with a black youth in Chicago that our party is working closely with. And they got into this question of religion and he said, look, a lot of your arguments are good, but if I didn't have my religion, if I didn't have my belief in God, I would just go try and kill all the white people. Well, if you're looking to me to defend the way too many white people think and act too much at a time, you are looking in the wrong place. But there are problems with the idea of just taking revenge on those who've had a more privileged position. So you have black people and other people of color kill off all the white people. Then I guess all the women kill off all the men. (laughs) Then all the gay people kill off all the straight people. And we keep going till I don't know who's left. But besides that obvious problem, there's another problem. If you kill all the white people and you still have the same system, you're gonna have the horrible situation where a lot of black people start acting like white people. Why? Because you're dealing with a system and the system shapes things in a certain way. It has certain rules to how it operates, certain dynamics, you could say. And people will be fitted into places and act accordingly as long as you have that system. And the bigger problem, the deeper problem with this whole idea is that we want to get to a world where there are no people who are up and other people who are down, where there are no people who are ruled and other people who are ruled over. Revenge might taste sweet for a minute, but it will not lead to a world in which we just keep going through the same cycle that these ones are up and those are down and those are down want to get on with those who are up so then they can put them down and we keep the whole cycle going. We want to get beyond all that. That's what we have to be about. (laughs) 
These attacks on Bob Avakian, the Rev Comps, and Sarah Taylor, and Rise Up for Abortion Rights, as I said last week, stink of the work of the political police, whether or not they are directly involved. To speak to this and provide some crucial background, Rafael Caderas, a regular contributor to the RNL show, has produced a piece on COINTELPRO, that is, the counterintelligence program that the FBI put in place in the 1950s to suppress, repress, and even murder revolutionaries as well as activists in the 1950s and 1960s. This will be our third segment. And that will be followed by a short video of Bob Avakian responding to a question after his 2018 speech, why we need an actual revolution and how we can really make revolution. And this question posed said, what is it going to take to convince black people that the RCP is not a white supremacist party like the Democratic Party? Then we're going to close today's program with a revolution rhyme for this historic time. So let's go. January 6 hearings and the violence of this system by Bob Avakian. The January 6 hearings into the attempted coup by Trump in the aftermath of the 2020 election are important, and it is important that Trump and his co conspirators be held fully accountable, including legally, for this attempted coup. But at the same time, it is also very important for people to not just accept the claims about democracy and the rule of law by the Democrats and others who are opposed to Trump and are exposing and denouncing his coup attempt. Very important that people finally come to recognize what this democracy is actually based on. In other writings and speeches, I have gone into this in greater depth. Here, I want to highlight critically important points in response to the claim, which has been repeatedly made during the course of these hearings, that we, those who preside over this system of capitalism and imperialism, govern through the rule of law and not through coups. And it's about preserving what actually makes America great. The rule of law, free and fair elections, and the peaceful transfer of power from one elected leader to the next. One, along with the horrific violence perpetrated within this country to maintain the law and order of this system, such as the continual wanton murders of black people by police. The truth is that the ruling class of this country, through the CIA and other intelligence services, as well as the military, has constantly carried out coups, invasions, and other violent actions all over the world. And without this, their up to now peaceful transfer of power within this country would have been impossible. The following are just a few examples of countries where the U.S. has carried out coups and similar actions to overthrow popular leaders and governments over the past 70 years. Iran. The CIA has released documents that show its role in the 1953 coup. That is the coup that toppled Iran's democratically elected prime minister, Mohammad Mossadegh. Shortly after his election, the CIA began to plan his overthrow. Guatemala. The Guatemalans dared to challenge an American business that controlled much of its economy. A CIA operation mobilized disaffected exiles and peasants into action. What we wanted to do was have a terror campaign. Congo. Patrice Lumumba became the Congo's first prime minister after it gained independence in 1960. But he was only in office for a few months, which led to him being ousted in a coup, imprisoned, tortured, and later executed. Indonesia. In 1965 and 1966, the Indonesian military intentionally killed approximately one million innocent civilians with the active, enthusiastic participation of the United States government. Chile. September 11th, 1973, a U.S.-backed coup in Chile led by General Augusto Pinochet ousted Chile's democratically elected president, Salvador Allende. Honduras. The fact that Honduras was a democracy didn't stop then Secretary of State Clinton backing regime change even there. Back in 2009, she threw her support behind the coup that ousted democratically elected Honduran President Manuel Zelaya. To look at this more broadly, in addition to the continuing crimes against humanity carried out by the U.S. just since World War II, including the U.S. slaughter of millions of civilians in Vietnam, 
and before that in Korea. And the bloody coups it engineered in Indonesia, Iran, and elsewhere. In the period from 1846, the U.S. has intervened in South and Central American countries, militarily through CIA coups or in other ways, at least 100 times, at the cost of literally hundreds of thousands of deaths and endless misery for the people of those countries. Uh, one doesn't have to be brilliant to attempt a coup. Uh, I disagree with that. As somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat, yeah. not here, but you know, other places, uh, it takes a lot of work. Much of these bloodthirsty actions and the terrible carnage and atrocity that they involved were carried out under democratic administrations. Monstrous war crimes and crimes against humanity have been repeatedly perpetrated by the Democrats, no less than the Republicans, for the basic reason that both of these parties are instruments of the ruling class of this system of capitalism imperialism. 2. The peaceful transfer of power which this ruling class has carried out up to now simply means a transfer of power from one section of this ruling class to another. The much-proclaimed right of the people to self-government by choosing their leaders through free and fair elections is simply the right to choose between these different contending sections of the ruling class, which enforces the rule of this system with continual and horrific violence all over the world, as well as within this country itself. 3. As shown by these January 6 hearings, and in many other ways, including the recent decision by the fascist majority in the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade, this ruling class and the society overall is so sharply and deeply divided that the ruling class cannot continue to rule as a unified force in the way that has held this country together under the rule of this system for generations since the end of the Civil War in the 1860s. These divisions and the conflicts they continually give rise to represent a potential weakening of the hold of this system over masses of people. They provide a rare opportunity for masses of people in their millions and millions to be shaken awake to recognize the real nature of this system and the violent means through which it has always maintained its rule and to rise up not just to resist its continuing and heightening atrocities, but to finally overthrow this system and replace it with a radically different system, one not based on vicious exploitation and murderous oppression here and throughout the world, but based instead on emancipating relations among people. That was a Revolution Nothing Less production of a new article on Revcom.us by Bob Avakian, the January 6 hear hearings and the violence of this system. And as I said earlier, our main commentary is up next, which is from my co-host, Sansara Taylor, who recorded this in New York City uh, yesterday, taking on and responding to the vicious hit job on the website the Daily Beast that targets Bob Avakian, the Revcoms, and Rise Up for Abortion Rights. On July 11th, Will Summer published an article on the website, The Daily Beast, that elevates scurrilous and unprincipled attacks by a motley cabal of pro-choice movement organizations against Rise Up for Abortion Rights and against the Revcoms, especially Bob Avakian. The fear-mongering title of this article screams out, is this communist cult trying to hijack the abortion movement? And the article is packed full of outright lies tired anti-communist tropes, and wildly out-of-context quotations. It's the kind of dishonest hit piece aimed at wiping out serious resistance and revolution, at destroying and endangering lives, a vicious witch hunt that would have made the notorious 1950s anti-communist crusader Senator Joseph McCarthy proud. Communist, 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 communist. Will Summers and the opportunists that he is channeling don't want you to think about what is the actual source of the problems humanity faces in this system of capitalism imperialism that rules over us. They don't want you to think seriously about the actual solution to this, a real revolution and a radically new society going to work to dig up all this misery, exploitation, and oppression. This is why Summer relies on scare words like cult, 
and libelous lies about financial improprieties, and again, out of context quotes in this vicious attack piece. All this would be pathetic if it weren't so dangerous. And if people in this society were not so easily deluded based on years of soaking themselves in stupefying identity politics, which trains them to focus on themselves and tearing each other down rather than going after this system that is the source of all the inequality and injustice they rightly want to see ended. But you see, Bob Avakian is a serious and a seriously scientific revolutionary leader. But those attacking Bob Avakian, BA, don't want to engage these questions and the work he has done on them, or where they differ, state their disagreements openly and with substance. Instead, they lie, fearmonger, and attack. And in this way, they do the spade work of those who rule this system and their political police, who have a long and grisly track record of working to isolate and neutralize revolutionary leaders and freedom fighters. Yes, Bob Avakian's thinking and analysis on the question of abortion and women's liberation over a whole quarter of a century and right up till now is what led me to play a key role in initiating Rise Up for Abortion Rights. So the hell what? No one has ever hidden that. As a follower of the revolutionary leader Bob Avakian, who is also the architect of the new communism, I'm going to be fighting for what I understand to be true. We need to stand shoulder to shoulder, whether you're going to end up voting for the Democrats in November or you're like me and you're trying to make a revolution that gets rid of the whole system that they and the fascist Republicans represent. Do you have any idea the work Bob Avakian has done on this question going back decades? Do any of these haters have a critique of any of this or any of the crucial and clarifying articles that BA has written in the midst of this struggle? Did you ever even read a single one of them, Will Summer? For that matter, did any of you now launching this attack ever read any of these articles? If you did, if you actually read these pieces, let alone all the work that Bob Avakian has done on this question and on ending the oppression of women and all oppression based on gender and sexual orientation and how this is linked by a thousand threads to the revolution we need to emancipate humanity. If you read this, you'd have to think and you'd have to think seriously about the dangerous situation we are facing and what is really going to be required to get us out of this madness. But for intellectual cowards who are more committed to staying in their comfort zone than to ending oppression, so much easier to hide behind words like cult and outright lies. In this way, your readers also don't have to think and start to notice how much dangerous bullshit you are actually peddling. The fact that this kind of garbage could get printed and then bounce around the internet and picked up by social media mobs doesn't make it more true or valid. It just shows the reality of the old adage that a lie can go halfway around the world while the truth is still putting its shoes on. And the fact that people fall for this shows how woefully identity politics woke groupthink has warped people's minds and wiped out their capacity for critical thinking. And by the way, Will Summer, where is your journalistic integrity? Do you have any regard for the truth? Or is trafficking in lies and rumor mongering to serve a political agenda your MO, which is really no different than Trump and the fascists over at Fox News? You printed a mere 14 words of the statements I sent you rebutting the lies your article traffics in. And instead of citing what we Revcoms have actually said and written about LGBTQ rights, abortion funds in the sex industry, you repeat dishonest distortions because like Trump always fell back on, people are saying. A lot of people are saying that. A lot of people said A lot of people are saying. Summer also accuses us Revcoms of not just joining in, but often playing an initiating role in important struggles against the crimes of this system, like the fight against institutional white supremacy and the epidemic of police murder, or the fight against the rising fascism in this country, as well as other important struggles. To this accusation, we can only answer innocent as charged. Of course we wage struggle and unite broadly against the crimes of this system to prevent people from getting even more beaten down. And of course we struggle with people over the need for revolution and the need to get into and deeply engage the work of Bob Avakian, not to build up our own thing, as Summer implies, but to enable humanity to get free. You see, Bob Avakian is loved by many who want more than anything else to break the chains that bind humanity. 
For the very same reason that he is hated by many backwards fools, opportunists, outright counter-revolutionaries, as well as functionaries and enforcers of the present oppressive system. It is because Bob Avakian's entire life and work is dedicated to making the most radical and thoroughgoing revolution in human history, the most radical break with this whole rotten world. Some people are thrown off by the fact that many of those dishonestly attacking Bob Avakian have so-called left credentials and nonprofit positions. Don't be. There is no coincidence that many of those now howling the loudest against Bob Avakian did absolutely nothing to mobilize people to fight against the overturning of abortion rights while there was still a chance. It's no coincidence that all of them, in one form or another, are slavishly determined to accept and work within the confines of the murderous system that rules over us. And it's certainly no coincidence that they are all overwhelmingly focused on increasing the inclusivity within their so-called movements and safe havens while turning their backs on the people outside their safe spaces and certainly on those outside the borders of the U.S. empire that they are living parasitically within. But to all of you who are not so jaded, not invested in protecting a little niche and this people-destroying system, let me say this. We are living in an extraordinarily high-stakes time. The normal workings of this system are under concerted attack by the hardcore fascists of the Republican Party, and the Democrats are incapable of holding things together the way they've been, which has always been an empire based on the most brutal, heartless exploitation and violent repression here and around the world. It's not surprising that those who fear people rising up and fighting for fundamental change are doubling down on their efforts to isolate and to bury the singular revolutionary leader who has forged a way out of this madness and is fighting doggedly to make that real. But this, like the rest of the horrible future that is advancing around us, must not be capitulated to. You need to stand up to and call out this McCarthyism. Dig into Bob Avakian and the new communism he has forged. Debate and engage this with substance. And don't measure it against whether it makes you feel comfortable or uncomfortable. Don't measure it against what everybody else is thinking. Measure it up against the reality of the world around us and what it is really going to take to get humanity free. Did you know that from 1956 to 1971, the FBI ran a secret program designed to foment conflict within revolutionary movements, as well as broader movements for reform? Conflicts which not only crippled these movements, but served as a cover to frame and even outright murder revolutionary fighters and activists. Did you know that they sent undercover people into these movements specifically to create or magnify conflicts? They spread unsubstantiated gossip, rumors, and often inventions. They forged documents and planted false stories in the press. And those the FBI identified as leaders were marked for neutralization, a, a euphemism for being framed on serious criminal charges or killed. All this came to light in 1971, when some heroic people snuck into an FBI office at night and appropriated the files on this counterintelligence program, COINTELPRO for short. Last March, someone broke into the FBI offices in Media, Pennsylvania, stole some records, and mailed copies of them around to several newspapers. Those records would help bring an end to J. Edgar Hoover's secret activities within the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He ordered his agents not only to expose new left groups, but to take action against them to neutralize them. As a result, many people in the movements of the time, and even beyond, in the broader society, adopted standards for settling differences over politics and ideology in a principled way to prevent the police, FBI, and other government agencies from spreading slanders, creating divisions, and endangering the lives of people active in the struggle for justice.
Now, decades later, younger generations are way too unaware of this history and in too many cases are doing the work of COINTELPRO, whether they're conscious of it or not. We see this in the vicious and very dangerous attacks that have been launched recently against Rise Up for Abortion Rights, the Revcoms, Bob Avakian, and Sansara Taylor by some activists in the movement spreading blatant lies and slander. A disinformation campaign no better than Trump's big lie. People who did little to nothing to stop the fascist attacks on abortion rights, trying to keep people away from and tear down the one group, Rise Up for Abortion Rights, that called for mass resistance to this. People who've never read anything substantial from Bob Avakian, never even thought about the crucial questions of revolutionary strategy and theory that are key to getting free from this capitalist imperialist nightmare, slandering the person who has answers to these questions as some kind of scary communist cult leader. Bullshit accusations of transphobia, which are easily refuted by looking at the Rise Up for Abortion Rights and Revcom websites, and completely made up charges of financial fraud, inviting the state in to investigate. This is extremely dangerous. What's even worse is how many people uncritically regurgitate these lies, spreading this garbage on social media. All this gets picked up and further amplified by journalists with no journalistic integrity and standards and used by operatives of the Democratic Party as well as Republican fascist forces. And it becomes the sewer in which the police and intelligence agents can swim and do their dirty work of trying to suppress dissent and snuff out revolutionaries. To give you a sense of the real-world consequences of this, I'm going to share some examples of what happened as a result of COINTELPRO. The point is to learn from this history, not repeat it. One of the earliest and ugliest FBI operations was against Malcolm X. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover was fixated on preventing the rise of a black messiah and clearly viewed Malcolm X as such a threat. One of the COINTELPRO tactics was to manufacture or fuel disputes between black movement organizations and individuals. In 1964, Malcolm left the Nation of Islam, the NOI, over important political differences. He was beginning to reject the mysticism and conservatism of the NOI and become more broad-minded and revolutionary-minded. And in my opinion, the young generation of whites, blacks, brown, whatever else there is, you're living at a time of extremism, a time of revolution, a time when there's got to be a change. People in power have misused it, and now there has to be a change, and a better world has to be built, and the only way it's going to be built with it, with it, it is with extreme methods. And I, for one, will join in with anyone, don't care what color you are, as long as you want to change this miserable condition that exists on this earth. Thank you. NOI leaders responded not by debating the political differences with Malcolm, but by stirring up personal animosity, launching unprincipled attacks and veiled threats against Malcolm. For example, Louis Farrakhan said that Malcolm was worthy of death. All this created an atmosphere in which the authorities could carry out their nefarious activities and manipulate others to do so for them. Soon after, Malcolm was assassinated. At least nine FBI informants and several other pigs from the NYPD's Red Squad were in the ballroom where it happened. The FBI Chicago office openly bragged about promoting and making the clash between the NOI and Malcolm worse. In November 2021, the two men who had been convicted for the murder of Malcolm X were found innocent and exonerated after decades in prison, but the hand of the system remains covered up. A major objective and focus of COINTELPRO was isolating and setting up the most revolutionary forces at the time for attack, especially the Black Panther Party, the BPP. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover declared the Panthers the greatest threat to the internal security of the country and wrote to FBI offices calling for imaginative and hard-hitting counterintelligence measures aimed at crippling the BPP. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover today asserted that the Black Panthers represent the greatest internal threat to the nation. As they did with Malcolm X, the FBI often focused on setting up others to do the actual dirty work. To take one notorious example, the FBI forged a letter, supposedly from someone in the community, to Jeff Fort, 
the leader of the Blackstone Rangers, a Chicago gang at the time, claiming that the BPP was getting ready to move on him, Fort was suspicious and decided the threatening letter was not credible. But this letter was part of a larger COINTELPRO operation that set in motion events that led to the assassination of Panther leader Fred Hampton by Chicago police and the FBI in 1969. We always say the Black Panther Party that they can do anything they want to us. We might not be back. I might be in jail. I might be anywhere. But when I leave, you can remember I said with the last words on my lips that I am a revolutionary. And you're going to have to keep on saying that. And yes, the FBI came after Bob Avakian, who by the late 1960s was emerging as a revolutionary leader. And let me say one thing to the white people in the audience. Now, you know, Bobby has been saying for a long time, we will not fight racism with racism. We refuse to stoop to the level of a racist to hate somebody because of the color of his skin. Well, that's fine. But I see a lot of white people walk around and say, oh, good. Now the Black Panther Party don't hate me. I can go on about my business. That's a cop out. And if you act like that, the Black Panther Party will hate you. Not because you're white, but because you ain't taking care of business to organize other people. Teach them the need to support the black liberation movement led by the Black Panther Party as a strong, fearless voice against American imperialism and to link up with all the people in Vietnam, in China, in Angola, in Latin America, and everywhere else who are standing shoulder to shoulder to drive this vicious beast out of the, out of the way and out of the pages of history. In June 1971, FBI Director L. Patrick Gray noted to subordinates that this is the kind of extremist I want to go after hard and with innovation. In his memoir, From Ike to Mao and Beyond, Bob Avakian talks about how he was approached by the head of the Berkeley Police Red Squad and told that he and the Revolutionary Union, which BA played a central role in founding, were under surveillance. A Freedom of Information Act discovery revealed that the House of Representatives did a whole report and investigation on the Revolutionary Union. Another Freedom of Information Act inquiry also showed that B.A. was under surveillance in Maywood, a suburb of Chicago, and that the FBI had made a diagram of the inside of his house, indicating through which windows someone could see different things going on inside the house. This was similar to the diagram of Fred Hampton's house that enabled the FBI and the Chicago cops to assassinate him. The 1960s and early 70s was a time when people who wanted a better world were discussing big questions, reform or revolution, Marxism, anarchism, or some other framework. What's required for black liberation and women's liberation? And what's the relation of that to the struggle to end all forms of exploitation and oppression? What methods and criteria for leadership should be used? How can revolution actually be made in this country up against the forces of repression? There were big debates, as there should be, about these important questions and sharp political differences. The pattern and practice of COINTELPRO was to exploit these differences, to twist them into vicious, destructive, personal attacks with the aim of disintegrating the movements for social change, isolating and setting up the most radical and revolutionary forces and leaders for neutralization. The urgent question for today is this. Don't fall for and don't tolerate the kinds of behavior that mimic what the FBI has used to destroy social movements and take out revolutionary leaders. Call it out. Fight for a culture where people unite against our common enemy and discuss and debate our disagreements, not gossip, rumors, and personal attacks. A culture where people are critical thinkers and look for the evidence rather than believing things just because it suits your objectives or comes from a source you like. A culture of broadness of mind and generosity of spirit, instead of sadistic Twitter trolls and building yourself up by tearing others down. There are big questions before us today, literally life and death questions as capitalism pushes our planet over the cliff, 
World war looms and the Republicans seek to impose their fascist agenda through the courts, the state houses, and the violent MAGA mobs. While the Democratic Party has no answers to this, except trying to maintain the norms of this oppressive system as the fascists tear up those norms. And it needs to be said that the normal workings of this system the Democrats uphold includes the merciless, vengeful repression and suppression of all who seriously oppose their system. So what road forward for humanity? Give in to the despair? Help a few people on the margins and keep relying on the Democrats as these activists attacking Rise Up for Abortion Rights and the Revcoms insist? Or the road of resistance and revolution? There is a roadmap for this and a new communism developed by Bob Avakian. If people got on this road, in this moment of deep crisis and divisions, we can change everything. That demands serious engagement. That is what the haters attacking us and the powers that be who take advantage of them are so afraid of. That is what we in the Revcoms will not back off of one inch. And we will not allow these counter-revolutionary assholes or just fools acting like the volunteer COINTELPRO brigade to help this system target the foremost revolutionary leader of our time, like they did Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, and so many others. There's a road that's been paved in blood, with oceans of blood in the coming years if things stay on this course, with tremendous suffering and death for people here and all over the world under this system. And there is a road of struggle. Which road, which future, which side are you on? Next, we have a short video from Bob Avakian uh, responding to a question in the Q&A after his 2018 speech, Why We Need an Actual Revolution and How We Can Really Make Revolution. The question posed was, what is it going to take to convince black people that the RCP is not a white supremacist party like the Democratic Party? And we're including this because it, uh, Bob Avakian's answer tracks a lot of the themes that we are talking about in today's show. What is it going to take to convince black people and other people of color that the Communist Party is not simply like the Democratic Party, really a white supremacist party that's just using tokenism in order to get the support of people of color? Uh, well, what it's going to take is, is doing what we say we're setting out to do and being what we say we are. You know, everybody who's part of this, not just the white people, but everybody that's part of this, we're saying that they, we have a certain analysis of what the problem is facing humanity and what the solution is and what's necessary, as I was speaking to in, during my presentation, what's necessary to get from here to there. And what will convince people is seeing people consistently acting on that. Yes, propagating it, struggling with people about it, but consistently acting on it. That's, that's what is the most convincing thing because people will have questions especially people who've been burned a thousand times. You know, this is, there's, there's uh, nothing surprising and nothing wrong with people, you know, wanting to see something proven as long as, it, you know, they're willing to, uh, you know, look at it honestly and see what it is. You know, that, that's the thing we have to get beyond. We have to get beyond where people just listen to a lot of slander about different things. You know, take a scientific approach. Actually look into things and, uh, and be a critical thinker. Evaluate things. Don't just listen to what somebody told you. Oh, I, you know, there's too much in this culture. I have to say this. Oh, I heard this about this one or that one. Or I heard this about that. Okay, so you heard that. So what's the next point? You know, let, let, if, if, let's get into looking into, well, you know, if it's important. Look, you know, if you heard that somebody, you know, uh, prefers to eat, um, you know, peanuts instead of uh, pecans. Well, who gives a, you know, who cares? Okay, but if, you know, you're hearing something important. If it's about something important, look into it. And yes, test people out, but be part of it in too. And, and, you know, and struggle with people. Don't just sit back and say, let's see if it's for real. Get involved and make it for real while you're struggling with people. And, you know, and then it's, it's on all of us whether black, Latino, Native American, Asian, white, or whatever, it's on all of us to actually make this happen. Because if we don't make this happen, if we don't get rid of this system, it's not going to matter because none of this stuff is going to change. You know, and, and you, you, we, can, we can juggle around who's in what position or whatever in a minor degrees, but it's not going to change for the, for the, for the you know, billions of people in the world who are, like I said, suffering terribly and completely unnecessarily. 
So the proof is in what you, you do, which includes what you say, but also you know, how consistently you carry out what you say. And where we, where we don't do what, what people think we should be doing, they should tell us. And we should get into struggle. Maybe they're wrong, maybe they're right. You know, maybe what they think we should do, be doing, there's good reason why we're not doing it. You know, people tell us, well, if you really want to be serious, why don't you get it on right now? Well, I like to get it on. If you want to be honest, I like to get it on right now, but we just get smashed. And then what good does that do anybody? So sometimes people raise things that are wrong. Sometimes they raise things that are right. Why, why are you guys not doing this? And they're absolutely right. Well, this is, part of, this is part of the process, but we have to also get beyond you guys and us guys. Everybody's got to get into this who wants to see a radically different and better world, and then we'll all struggle together over it. And, you know, the, you know that's the process, you know, and constantly summing up what we're doing and what we're learning. Actually being scientific in the sense, that you're not just some abstract thing or a phrase to throw around, but actually investigating reality. What's happening when we're going out to change reality? What more are we learning about reality and all its different you know, expressions? And how do we do better at the objective that we have to aim for? This is the process that has to go in. And people, look, there's no guarantee, I'll say this to, to her, for anybody. There, to be honest, there have been white leaders who've been sold out, who've sold out. There have been black leaders who've sold out. There have been leaders of every race and nationality who've sold out, and, and many who haven't, and have been killed. There's no guarantee ab about this. We, we just have to do what needs to be done and do it, you know, and learn to do it better and better and fight through all, everything that's going to be thrown at us to get where we need to go. Because, like I said, it, you have a basic decision here. Do you want to continue with this? Not just you. I mean, people have a, have a basic decision. Do you want to continue with the world the way it is or do you, or do you want to actually be part of bringing to being a completely different world where, every, where everything that we're just told is the way things have to be no longer is. And that's the question. And if you want that, you, you know, we can't give any guarantees. What we can say is that this is what we stand for, this is what we're working for, this is what we're fighting for, and become part of it, and, we'll, and let's struggle with each other about how to get where we need to go. That's the answer I would give. That brings us to the end of this 110th episode of the RNL Revolution Nothing Less show. And as always, I want to remind you to spread this show on social media to encourage your friends to watch it. In fact, watch it with them uh, and, and have a discussion about it. And then let us know what you think. And in closing out today's show, we're going to play a, a, a poem titled A Revolution Rhyme for This Historic Time. It's read by Roosevelt. And so I'm going to say good night now uh, for this week's show, and we'll see you next Thursday night at 5 o'clock Pacific Time, 7 o'clock Central Time, and 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Good night. A revolution rhyme for this historic time. Get, get, get down. Some still think it's smart that the fool would make believe cool to mock and stalk and kill each other, using and abusing one another, selling women, slinging dope, chasing money, squashing hope, and what we really need is hard to fight for what is right and know how to overthrow that big time enemy that keeps us all from being free. This system with this savage power keeps us down, makes life sour. To hell with politicians posing as our friend. With them, this nightmare is never going to end. Or living dead who straight up hate us, twisted, fascist, zombie brains. Prejudice makes them insane. Like orange head Donald Trump, that woman hating racist chump, and all those who want us dead or living in constant dread, down on our knees praying while they keep on slaying. The police who slaughter, suffocate, and smother, then do it to another, and smirk with a vicious grin, will we kill each other again? With this shit, we're done. There's nothing ever really won. It's time to quit. Revenge, the endless cycle. Kids can't play or ride their bicycle. So let's go for the real solution. Get with the real calm revolution. Get thousands, then millions just like us. Don't let the capitalist power psych us. Get us making bad decisions. When there's a science strategy and plan, leadership and vision. From no lie, an old white man. B.A. 
Bob Bacon. He is for real, not faking it. Revolutionary from the days with the Black Panthers. He kept on deep this whole time after. There's a real chance coming to get free. Because those who rule us are now at each other's throat. But would we dare to make the most of this rare time we're living in? It's harder now to fool us with their talk of democracy for all. Their systems need to fall. We got the science of schoolers. The whole thing's ripping apart. But do we have the heart to rise above this shit and get ourselves fit to do what cries out to be done with so much that could be won? We need to get busy, make the oppressors dizzy as we get organized and ready, working steady for the hour to bring our power. If you're black or brown or any other color, show that you got the valor, the heart to fight for what is really right. Don't listen to any mess about going for something less than bringing down this system and the clowns who front for it. They're not fit to rule the earth. Their system's worth less than the foulest trash we need to smash. It. Break it apart. Heal the scars from living how they had us. So join with the ones that next street over. No more trying to blast us. Unite with the people far and wide. Sisters, brothers, all just as brothers who can be on our side. The capitalist oppressors, cold-blooded aggressors. Even with all their guns, the time has come to work so we can put them on the road. Fighting together to put an end to all that madness and begin to make the world a way worth living. A new day, a better way to be. Emancipation for humanity.